Ted Cruz, welcome to the program. Glenn, good to be back. Thanks for having me. Uh, so let's let's first of all start with uh, Donald Trump and the uh, the um, lawyers and the affidavits. Do you see anything here that is uh, disturbing to you that you think will make an impact? Well, there's certainly a lot disturbing. We, what we've got to do is let the legal process play out, and and we have now multiple cases pending in multiple states challenging the outcomes of the election, calling for recounts, contesting the election, and, and that litigation has to be adjudicated. And, 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 you know, it's very difficult for any of us, for you or me or for someone reading Twitter, to, to, to know what exactly is right and accurate about these allegations and what isn't. That's why we have a judicial system. We have a judicial mm-hmm. system to test facts, and, and, and the obligation now of the Trump campaign's lawyers is to go and prove their case, put on direct evidence, put on expert witnesses, uh, have it subjected to cross-examination, and prove up the case. And, and the overarching objective should be to ensure that every legal vote is counted, but also that every vote that was illegally cast is not counted. And that's the process that's playing out right now. Do you have any idea why the rejection rate of the uh, mail-in ballots in Pennsylvania was 0.03 when the best they have is usually just under one, but new new voters who are voting for the first time with mail-in ballots, the rejection rate is usually 3%? Out of 2.6 well, million, they rejected 951 ballots. That's that's a almost a perfect that's almost a perfect game. Yeah, and, and that certainly suggests that, that, that when those ballots come under the, the next set of scrutiny, that you're going to see a, a significant additional set of ballots invalidated. So, so one of the things that, that gives the greatest cause for optimism uh, is this election in the time of COVID, there, there's a pretty marked disparity in terms of how the votes were, were distributed. On election day, with in-person bo- voting, Donald Trump won a significant majority of the votes cast by an in-person voting on Election Day. Of mail-in voting, Joe Biden won a significant uh, majority of the votes cast early on mail-in voting. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now, here's the good news. If you look historically to recounts, if you look historically to election litigation, the votes cast in person on Election Day – tend to stand. It, 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 it's sort of hard to screw that up. Those votes are generally legal and they're not set aside. Uh, mail-in votes historically have a much higher rate of rejection, which is what you pointed out, that, mm-hmm. that when they're examined, uh, there are a whole series of legal requirements that vary state by state, but mail-in, voters cons- mail-in votes consistently have a higher rate of rejection, which suggests that as these votes begin being examined and subject to scrutiny, that you're going to see uh, Joe Biden's vote tallies go down. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a good thing. The challenge is for 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 President Trump to prevail. He's got to run the table. He's got to win not just in one state but in several states. Uh, that makes it a lot harder to prevail in the litigation. I hope that he does so, but it it, it is a real challenge. And, 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 and we, shouldn't, uh, uh, we shouldn't try to convince ourselves otherwise. So before we go to Georgia, let me, let me express a feeling that, that I have and that I think a lot of uh, people who voted for Donald Trump have. We have seen the evidence on what the media has done. We've seen the evidence of what was happening in Ukraine. Uh, we have seen the evidence of the Russian collusion case. And no one ever seems to pay for their crimes. We know what uh, Hillary Clinton did. We know what Barack Obama did. Uh, I mean, we could go back all the way to Benghazi or beyond. And again, no one pays for the crime. I think people feel like, who's going to fight for me uh, that's not not beholden to the system? Who's going to fight for me if Donald Trump goes away? I I understand that sentiment, and you're right. I think the the, the single best uh, characteristic of President Trump is is that he stands up and fights. And and all of us are so tired of Republican politicians that just roll over, that are not willing to fight, that, that, that that are scared to take a punch, scared to have the media criticize them. And, and Trump is not, and, and, it, and it is 
something sorely needed to have strong leaders who will actually fight for us. Now, you know, you talked about people being held accountable. Uh, I, I am beyond frustrated that we've gone through four years of the administration and, and none of the people who committed criminal conduct uh, politicizing the Department of Justice, politicizing the FBI, politicizing the intelligence operation, none of them have been held accountable. No. None of them have been prosecuted. No. And, 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 and it's, it's maddening. And, but it's, it's, it's also the loss of uh, trust in our system uh, and I think the loss of the republic, if if no one goes to jail or pays for the the crimes and we don't root out the bad guys, and I think that opportunity is slipping through our fingers, what do we have left, Dad? You're, you're right, and, and a big part of the problem, so for the first couple of years, Jeff Sessions was the attorney general. And, yeah. and you know, Jeff is a decent man for whom the job was simply too big. He was not up for the job. He did not do a good job of it, and, and there was no accountability for the first couple of years. Bill Barr came in. Barr is, is a much better attorney general. I'm grateful at least that Barr has initiated investigations and assigned prosecutors to go <laughs> after these folks, but they haven't done it yet, and, and, and we are potentially running out of time. Yeah. So, so I don't know what the hell's taking I taking don't know either. So long. But but it is, uh, you know, from my perspective in the Senate, so sometimes, uh, you know, it's interesting. Social media is interesting. I'll, you'll ha I'll have people yell at me, well, Cruz, why don't, why don't you prosecute them? Well, <laughs> uh, under our constitutional system, that's not actually an authority I have. Right. Um, I'm in the legislature. I can introduce legislation. I can pass legislation. I can convene hearings, and I've chaired hearings repeatedly. Uh, in fact, would just – just this week, we had Andrew McCabe, the former deputy director at the FBI, um, who, who at the hearing, I cross-examined and lit him up, but I don't have the ability to convene a grand jury and secure an indictment. Only the executive branch can do that, and so I can call for it, uh, but it's got to be the executive branch that actually executes that. All right, let me, because we're going to run out of time. Is it true you can move to Georgia and then move away after you voted? Well, you can. Uh, there is some possibility if you do that, you'll get prosecuted for voter fraud, but that would be after the fact, and that would be after uh, a crazy left-wing socialist Democrat was elected. And, and, and let me be very clear. If the Democrats win these two seats, and it's very possible that they win these two seats, then we go from a 52-48 Senate to a 50-50 Senate, if Joe Biden is president, that means Chuck Schumer is majority leader. And if Chuck Schumer is majority leader, there will be zero constraints on the most radical left-wing ideas they're pursuing. If Chuck Schumer is majority leader, they will end the filibuster. They will pass a massive tax increase. They will enact the Green New Deal, which will destroy millions of jobs, especially in the state of Texas. And not only that, they will add two new states to the union designed to get four new Democratic senators immediately, and they will pack the U.S. Supreme Court. They will add four new left-wing activist judges who will take away our free speech rights, our religious liberty rights, our Second Amendment rights. All of that threat is a clear and present danger, and, we've, and it all happens January 5th one way or the other. So what do we do? Win. Uh, that, that, that is the only answer is to win Georgia. I am traveling to Georgia. I'm spending money. I'm, I'm sending my team. I'm engaging in resources. Uh, I, I, I mean, I'm doing everything I can to turn out conservatives, turn out freedom-loving Georgians, turn out anybody, because this is a fight. It's not just for Georgia. It is now for the entire country.